What's up guys, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, Hey there, my name is Morgan. I'm a recent UX UI design bootcamp graduate from Career Foundry, and I make videos documenting my career change from digital marketing into UX design. And I try to offer advice where I can. So for those of you who don't know, I actually started out on Medium before I got into YouTube. Writing those articles is really what inspired me to get into the UX design YouTube community, helping people who are going through what I'm going through. One of my earliest and most popular articles is why, how, and when to change careers to UX design. I wrote that I think six or seven months ago and it still gets a decent amount of views to this day so I figured why not make a YouTube video about it and share it with my other audience. I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like if you find it helpful. It helps me out a lot. Let's get into it. Way too many people are stuck in a role that they're just unhappy with whether it's because they have a family that they need to support, they feel like they've spent too much time building up that career just to change it now, or because they feel that they're too old to switch careers now. But as UX design becomes more mainstream, more people are realizing that this is the career that they should have gotten into and are scared to get into it now. So if you need a little bit of reassurance, I'm going to tell you why, how, and when to change your career to UX design. So before we get into the how and the when, I want to talk about the why. So you got to ask yourself the important questions. Are you unhappy with your current position? This is a really important one that you need to recognize. Are you unhappy with your actual tasks? Are you unhappy with the company? Are you unhappy with your coworkers? You have to actually identify why you're unhappy in your career. So for me, I wasn't happy with my tasks. I love the people and the company. It was great, but I got more excited by the UX UI designers work and that's how I realized that I wanted to get into UX design. So you got to make sure that you don't confuse task satisfaction with company dissatisfaction. Do you want to be in a more creative role? Do you want to solve more problems? You got to really identify what is wrong here. Don't just take a leap of faith. You really got to understand yourself. Otherwise you may regret your decision. And then obviously you have to ask yourself if UX design is right for you. Whether or not you're dissatisfied with your current role, you really need to determine if UX design is even a good fit for you. It might sound good, but do you really understand the day to day? So if you know anyone in the field, or if there's anyone on LinkedIn, or maybe you joined an online community, or maybe there's someone at your work, have a coffee with them. Ask them about what their day to day tasks are like, if there's anything about the role that happened that they weren't expecting. Try and get a good grip on what UX design is actually like. For all you know, you may want to actually get into UI design. Maybe that's what you're interested in, or maybe you're interested in graphic design, or maybe you're interested in coding. Just because UX design sounds like it's this creative problem solving role does not mean that it's the correct creative and problem solving type of role. YouTube videos can also be really helpful. You can watch a day in the life video or what it's actually like to be a UX designer videos. There's tons out there. The most famous one is probably Chun Bun's video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. And then I would also recommend looking at UX design and product design job descriptions to see what skills you need to have and what their definition of a day-to-day -day schedule would be like. That brings me to my next point. Are you ready to learn new skills? If you've seen my video on if your background is relevant to UX design, you know that every background is relevant to UX design. However, that does not mean that you're ready to just hop into a UX design role. There are certain skills that you need, technical skills. So you need to be able to conduct user research. You need to be able to conduct competitive research. You need to be able to do user interviews. You need to be able to use design software like Figma, Adobe XD, and or Sketch, and then other prototyping software. You need to understand how animations work between frames. You need to know how to do usability testing. You need to know how to present. You need to know a little bit of UI design. You need to be able to communicate with people on dev teams or other stakeholders. Just because you have transferable skills does not necessarily mean that you know how to do all of these things. So you have to be prepared to learn UX design and learn new skills. Next, you need to determine if you're willing to be part of a team. Now, this isn't necessarily the case for every company. Some companies you're sort of expected to wear a lot of hats and do everything, which is another thing that you would have to be willing to do. So you would either have to be willing to work completely alone and do a lot more than most UX designers do, or you have to be willing to work with a team. This was a huge thing for me because I really hated group projects in college because I felt like I was going to either get steamrolled or I was going to get stuck with all the work. But as I actually got into the work field, when I was in marketing, I realized how important it is to have some to get feedback from and people to collaborate with and I realized I really do want to work on a team in my career and then maybe eventually go into freelancing where I would be working more by myself but to start your career you generally do have to work in a team and you have to be okay with that. 
and not just be okay with that, but you have to be able to work and communicate effectively. And you have to determine, is that for you? At the very least, you're going to have to present. All right, now we're moving on to the how. Now that you understand why you want to become a UX designer, you can start planning out how you're going to plan to transition. I do have two videos on different ways to learn UX design online. There's one that talks about specific platforms that I have used, and then there is another one that is an updated version with better audio that is about different methods you can use to learn UX design online. I'm going to address those topics a little differently in this video. So firstly, you could self-teach. This is how I began. I started watching YouTube videos and reading articles and I just downloaded Figma and started working in it by myself and seeing how it worked. I took UI kits and played with them and figured out how everything worked, figured out how the design software actually functioned. Like I said before, you should start going onto job descriptions and seeing what types of tools you need to learn and then you can look up tutorials on how those work. You can also go on Google and try to find some UX design course syllabi- syllabi? Some syllabi? Syllabuses? Or if your alma mater has a UX design course, you can try and find the syllabus there. They may not be detailed, but you may be able to come up with a general guide for what you need to learn from start to finish. So the pros of self-teaching are that obviously you get to work at your own pace. So that means that you can do this while working a full-time job. And for the most part, it is free. So the cons are obviously that it's very time consuming. It can take you a really long time to get to where you need to be in order to start working. There's no structure or guidance, so if you start teaching yourself the wrong things or start going in the wrong direction, no one's there to tell you otherwise. You also need a lot of self-discipline to stay on track. So if you think that self-teaching is for you, then you can go down into the description and I'll have a list of resources, of publications, YouTubers, design tools that you should probably know, and just general design concepts that you should know. The next method of transitioning into UX design is actual work experience. First is internships. Internships are great for part-time workers and people with flexible hours. You can expect to work anywhere from 10 to 20 hours per week, and you can expect to gain some mentorship from this. Don't just take any job though because you may end up in a coffee runner position. The problem with internships is that they are often looking for college students, so if you are no longer in college then it's really difficult to compete. Then of course internships are often unpaid, but the benefit is that they usually last only about 90 days. So that's 90 days of experience that you don't have to pay for, unlike a course. So next is freelance. So freelancing gives you the unique opportunity to work with different types of industries and different types of people. But paid opportunities can be difficult to come by unless you already have a portfolio of work. If you're really new to UX design, I would recommend going to friends that have businesses. I would recommend going to small local businesses or maybe mom and pop shops and just showing how you could help their business. Unfortunately, these are probably going to have to be either barter type projects where if you do an app design for a gym, then they may give you a free membership or something like that. Paid opportunities when you're brand new are very difficult to come by, like I said, unless you already have a great portfolio of work or that person just has a lot of trust in you because maybe they know you personally. You could also go through your current company. So I feel like this gets looked over a lot because people feel guilty for wanting to switch roles even when it has nothing to do with their company. If your company already has a UX designer, that's incredible. Go talk to them, learn from them, ask if they need help with anything that you can work on, maybe outside of hours, talk to your boss. If your company has no UX department, maybe pitch it to them. Show how UX design is effective for companies and their growth. You would be putting essentially your reputation on the line and you may have to work unpaid hours in order to get this done because if you already have a different role in that company, you're probably just going to be expected to do your normal work, but it could really lead to something great if you pull through. The last one is startups. So startups can be great because they're often looking for people with a lot of passion and people who believe in them because they generally cannot compensate you. You'd probably be expected to work a lot of long hours and you run the risk of the company just completely floundering and you never seeing a cent. Or you could potentially be getting on the ground floor of something great. Ooh. Well, that's ominous. 
I think that's the thunder saying, don't do startups. No, but for real, startups can be great for some people, but you really have to believe in what the company is doing. Either way, if you're okay with being unpaid and grinding, some people love that. Go for it, great learning experience. Another way of transitioning into UX design is probably the most common way is going through a boot camp. As you guys probably know, I graduated from Career Foundry in April. There are a ton out there. You really just have to decide on what's best for you. I have several reviews as well as advice on how to graduate from a boot camp quickly. Boot camps are great because you get to learn foundational knowledge, immersive knowledge, and then usually some sort of UI design. And then you also should be leaving with at the very least a case study and at most a portfolio with several projects that you can start submitting to job applications. It is imperative that you shop around and you find a UX design boot camp that is right for you. They are expensive. They can range anywhere from 6,000 to 15,000 for a quality boot camp. You've got to determine your priorities and determine what's right for you. I liked Career Foundry because of the flexibility. At the time I was working, so it was important that I could complete tasks on my own schedule rather than going to a boot camp that had set times that we had to meet or hard deadlines on when I needed to submit things. If you want to transition as quickly as possible, I think that General Assembly is a good one, but you're encouraged to leave your full-time job. There are tons of reviews out there. Go Go watch them, read about it. I recommend Career Foundry to those who need flexibility because that was huge. And I may or may not have a 5% off code in my description. If you use my code, you'll get 5% off any Career Foundry bootcamp and then I get 5% as well. And the last transitioning option that I'm going to talk about is graduate school. One of the greatest things about graduate school is that when you have a master's degree, you generally get paid a lot more. The cons of that is that if you don't have UX design experience, but you get your master's degree, you may be too expensive for companies who want someone who with more experience. When it comes to graduate school, you generally don't need to have a specific type of undergraduate degree, but you may be expected to turn in a portfolio of work. My plan is to get one year of working experience and then get my master's degree. I have a specific program picked out I'll talk about it another time because that's not what this video is about. What would be the ideal situation is if you work with a company who wants a UX designer and they send you to school for it and reimburse your tuition. But alas, this is not real life. All right, so let's talk about the when. You know why you wanna change careers. You know how you wanna change careers. But when do you start changing careers? Of course, now is always the best time. If you're sure that this is the right decision and you're confident in it, don't hesitate. Don't waste your time. Get right into it. Sign up for a boot camp, apply to graduate school, or pitch that UX design idea to your boss. Every day that you spend thinking about it is a day that you could have been designing. Oh goodness. Quitting your job and just jumping into a 10 week boot camp to switch your careers is not always practical. You may have a family to support. You may lose your apartment. If you need your paychecks and you need to work while you transition, you can of course always do it gradually. I've mentioned a million times, Career Foundry is wonderful for having a flexible boot camp. With or without that code, I really do believe in Career Foundry. I've had a fabulous experience so far and I really recommend it for those that need to work. If you can't afford a boot camp, you can teach yourself. Go watch one of those videos on nine ways to learn UX design online. I'm sure that you'll find something that meets your knees. Meets your knees. I'm sure you'll find something that... I'm sure you'll find something that meets your needs. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you take this as a sign to get your career started if you've decided that this is the way that you wanna go. That introspection that I talked about with why you want to change careers is very important. The grass is not always greener. Make sure that you're not leaving your career for the wrong reasons. Don't forget to give this video a like, comment, and please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I wish you guys the best of luck, and I'll see you next week. Bye.